Bazooka Prophet. Uh, we are going to be working today swiftly on a course in A level, which is uh, Chem 2 and Theory. And uh, the part of the uh, course I'll be talking about is uh, Kinetic Theory of Gases Part 1. Now, below, or as you can see on the board, we have the outlines, things that we you should that you should know and that we must talk about in this first uh, part of the video we are shooting. Now the outlines are as follows. First one we have the states of matter, second one we have the ID gases and re gases. The third one we have what we call the kinetic theory of gases and its postulates. We have number four, the physical properties of gases, which include volume, pressure, temperature, number of moles. Number five is the equations of gases or the equations of gas laws, which include the Boyce law, the Charles law, the Amortin's law, the general gas law, ID gas law, Dalton's law, Avogadro's law. There are very many, but for the sake of this first part, we'll work on this one for today. All right. Yeah. Okay, so states of matter. Now, basically, we have three states of matter, which are the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. And their properties are as follows. In this, yeah, in the like in the solid states, solid states they have definite shape, they have definite volume, and they are non-compressible. They are non-compressible. Now, when you a popular question is often asked, why do solids have a definite shape? They do have a definite shape because the force of attraction that is holding the particles together in the case of solid are tightly bound, meaning the particles are not free to move about. Example of, uh, of, of solid state of matter, we have diamond. Some elements such as silver, gold, etc., aluminium, as the case may be. Now we move straight away to the liquid state. In the, uh, in the liquid state, liquid do not have a definite shape. Rather, they take the shape of their what of their container, but they do have a definite volume. Which subsequently I will let you know what is volume and how it partakes and how it plays its major role. In chemical, uh, in kinetic theory of gases. Now, the liquid states. Now, we say that liquids, liquid do not have a definite shape, but rather they take the shape of their container. They are what they have a definite volume, and also just like solid state, they are also non-compressible. I mean, they cannot be compressed. We move straight away to the gaseous state, and the gaseous state, which is our major uh, focus. For today's block of lecture, in the gaseous state, they do not have a definite shape, neither do they have a definite volume, nor a boundary surface. Nor a boundary surface. Now, the force of attraction holding gaseous particles together are far apart, are far apart, and that the particles tend to move randomly, as we will see. In the what kinetic theory of gases and its postulates. Now, if you should observe keenly, what are the examples of the liquid states? Now, we have water, which is a major one. We have water, we have mercury, we have bromine. And mercury and bromine, they are liquid at room temperature. Meanwhile, don't forget that when you say something is at room temperature, it means it is at 25 degrees Celsius or, or what? Or 298 Kelvin. You get me? So, mercury, bromine, they, they, what? they are liquid at room temperature. Of course, you are aware that mercury is the only melter that is what? Liquid at room temperature. Why? That of bromine is the only non metal that is liquid at room temperature. Although it has been said that gallium, uh, gallium is a melter that falls on that uh, group, what? That falls that fall on that group theory. That gallium tends to 
also being like a liquid at room temperature but it has not yet been identified because when gallium is put on the pan gallium can be uh, can be solid sorry can be solid but even when it touches your pan it becomes what liquid meaning it is pan sensitive then we I fabric the fact that in this like in that of the gaseous state gaseous state they are compressible I mean they can be compressed for example your gas cylinder you have in your like that you make it up in your like in your houses the gases they are compressed you understand even in your lighter used by smokers they can also be compressed so examples of gaseous states we have uh, uh, we have gases of feeding gas uh, I name them hydrogen sulfide gas we have phosphine gas that have etc that are very uh, 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 very very many but but these three states of matter are not all there is because scientists have still discovered that we will be very parochial or there will be a lacuna in our world in trying to group the states of matter into this theory form because why there are other states of there are, there are other substances that do not fall into these three states of matter and what are some examples or what are some examples of this uh, of these uh, substances like stars like the sun you can name them like washes or calculator etc the case may be so without wasting time we then after more study we then uh, today we are aware that we also have what we have other states of matter which include the plasma the glass and the liquid crystals now let us explain them one after the other now in the case of plasma what are plasma plasma consists of what of positive ions and unbound electrons which are found uh, which are found in nature at the lower what at the lower part of the what atmosphere and they include the stars and what and the sun is that clear so we move ahead quickly to that of glass in the case of glass, glass, uh, uh, there are substances in which they, they, they tend to have the what? The structure. Hmm? They tend to have the structure of a liquid, but the properties of a solid. And they are found where? Uh, uh, they are found in many cases. Why in the, uh, uh, why in, the uh, in that of the liquid crystal, they are substances that have the structure of liquid and their properties are in what other form meaning meaning their structures are order they are ordered in that plan now they can be found in where they can be found in where in our washes and in our what calculator exactly all right okay now we will talk now on what we call the characteristics of gases. <laughs> now, as we rightly said earlier that we said gases do not have a definite shape, they do not have a definite volume, they are not comp they are not compressible, and they do not have boundary or surfaces. It means that a gas tends to fill is what tends to fill its container completely. And uniformly now I will I will uh, I will point you to tip of these two points that they tend to now we move ahead now as I already told you that in the case of gases they do not have a definite shape a definite volume nor do they have a boundary surface it therefore means that it therefore means that gases tend to feel their container uniformly or sorry they feed their container completely and uniformly please take note of two things completely they tend to feed their uh, their their container their any available space they fill it up completely and take note take note and uniformly so we then move ahead. Now we've, we've talked about gases and coal and stuff like that. Now what then? How do we then differentiate between 
an ID gas, an ID gas from a re what from a re gas. Now, it will interest you to know that an ID gas can also be called a perfect what a perfect gas. Why a re gas can also be called what an actual what an actual gas. Now, how then can we not differentiate an ID gas from a re gas? Now, take note, an ID gas tends to obey gas law at all temperature and pressure. I repeat, an ID gas tends to obey the gas law at all temperature and pressure. Why that of re gas do not obey the gas law. But meanwhile, take note that a re gas can be like an ID gas at what? At, uh, at low pressure and high temperature, meaning at low pressure and high temperature, a re gas cannot be differentiated or might not be differentiated from an ID gas. Now, what did they bring about the deviation? Now, it means that a re gas tend to deviate from an ideal situation or from, or from an ID gas at what? At, uh, at high pressure and what now? Low temperature. Take note. Uh, a re gas uh, uh, deviates from an ID gas at what? High pressure and low temperature but i have told you that at low pressure and high temperature you cannot differentiate a re gas from an id gas i hope that is clear now we move ahead quickly again to know that gases are a sense of a gas is sensitive to changes in temperature and what and pressure as you will get to know sooner or later now we did, did uh, I've told you the first uh, the first difference between a real gas and an ID gas. Now another second difference, another second difference between an ID gas from a real gas is that for an ID gas, an ID law is obeyed, which include the PV is equal to what N R O T. Sooner or later we'll be able to use this formulas to solve questions why that of a re gas they tend to because there's a deviation we tend to make it of what we call a van der Waals equation to, to to explain re gases is understood which is quick progress the pressure the volume the number of moles the uh, gas constant and the temperature why that of a re gas we have this van der Waals equation which we use which is p plus a n square over v square v minus m b is equal to what n r o t this is what we call the uh, uh this deviation you get me now you, you get the meaning we, remember we have established the fact that the volume of a uh, the volume of uh of a gas is what is sensitive to changes in temperature and what and pressure is understood now again too which is the last different differences between an ID gas from a real gas that an ID gas does not have a volume but it does have a velocity one and it does have a mass but in the case of a real gas they do have volume they do have velocity and also and also mass so i think i've been able to what give you an elaborate differences between an id gas from a re gas remember i have told you that an id gas are what uh, that id gas and re gas they are the same or they follow the same order at what at what at high pressure and low what temperature understood but there's a deviation but there's a deviation i would say that an id gas and a re gas they tend to follow the same order at low pressure and high temperature 
please low pressure and high temperature but the but a real gas tend to deviate from an ideal gas at high pressure and low temperature you yeah, understood so i think we've gladly talked about this area then we can now move on to the next aspect all right now we are now into the real deal for this for the course now we move ahead quickly to what we call the kinetic theory of gases and its postulate which i'll tell you very soon now what was the theory like and what does it state from the theory the theory states that gases are made up of tiny particles which are always moving continually it understood so it definitely moves so it therefore means that an increase in temperature tends to increase the uh, uh, the movement of the particles it understood so we've we've established the fact that gases are made up of tiny particles which are always moving continually but it will be of a uh, like it will be a problem if we don't talk about the history of this kinetic theory of gases now the way the word kinetic theory of gases or we are having we are we are first developed by scientists such as daniel benolin john james moctasin we have k a chronic and rudolph they follow in order the first person to start to make ideas now the first person or the first scientist to have idea of this kind of theory of gases where or was Daniel Bernoulli followed by John James Wachtaxen, K.A. Kronig and the last one which took it in a more pronounced form is Rudolf Ward Clausius. Now all these men work hand in hand to see that kinetic theory of gases is where we have it today. Now after many years later, after many years later, the word, the word, after many years later, the, the word, uh, uh, the word kinetic theory was first coined out by a man called Lord Kelvin, which is often called William Thompson. If I understood, and it was then adopted by Maxwell, and that name kinetic theory is now being used today everywhere in the world to be called kinetic theory of gases all right so let's continue yes okay now you can see on the board ah uh, on the board it's what we call the postulates of the kinetic theory of gases which is a major intro to students remember i have told you that the development of this theory started from the last pioneer of the theory that i gave to you uh, earlier on direct on the board which was name is called rudolf clausius you get me now but that the name kinetic theory was coined or was first introduced or was first said by Lord kelvin whose name is william what thompson which was now adopted by maxwell and it is now being used even often now as I'm talking to you. So what are the postulates? The first one is that all gases are made up of tiny particles, get me, which are always moving what randomly, and as they move up, they collide with one another. For what you can see here, that a gas consists of large number of what, very small particles in a ceaseless what random what motion. You get me just out of paraphrase just not for you now the second one is that the molecules are perfectly elastic and of course when you have the word perfectly elastic it means that no energy is lost you get me now so just what i wrote that therefore no kinetic energy is lost during collision meaning when they collide no energy is lost they are perfectly elastic meaning they can rebounce and their rebounds does not result to a loss in what in kinetic energy we move to another theory that the volume of the gas molecules 
compared with the total volume of the gas, you get me now, that the volume of the gas molecule compared with the what, total volume, meaning it is negligible, meaning the volume of the gas in the container is negligible or insignificant. As you can see, they will move to number four, that the molecules exert no attraction upon one another, meaning when they come together, they do not stay, just like it will just like what it, it took us to, to number two that they are perfectly what elastic no loss in energy then number five is that the pressure exerted by gas is due to the what impact with which the world of the con containing what vessel that the pressure exerted by gas is due to the impact with the walls of the containing vessel the last term which is the most important among them is what the temperature of the gas that the temperature of the gas or the temperature of a gas is the measure of its average kinetic energy that makes up the gas word particle which i wrote here that the average kinetic energy of the molecule is proportional to the word absolute temperature take note that the average kinetic energy of the molecules is what proportional to what is absolute temperature. That's what I told you that the temperature of a gas is the measure of its average kinetic energy that makes up what the gas what molecule. Uh, molecule. If understood, all right. So we continue. Now volume. Now what is volume? Remember, I told you the heading is what the physical properties of gases. Now the first one is volume. What's volume? Volume simply put is the space an object occupy. Exactly. The meaning the volume of the gas is the space the gas molecule what the what they occupy. Now, what are the units that we make use of in volume under gases law? Remember, we're working with gases law. They are we have one one we have what they call cubic centimeter. The units are cubic centimeter. So we say is centimeter cube. No, please, it is cubic centimeter. We have which is cmq we have dmq which is cubic decimeter we have milliliters we have liters we have all what they call the meter cube exactly the meter cube now please this is where students always have issues with the units take note cm cube and d sorry cm cube and milliliter they are the same or they are equivalent rather please they are equivalent why dm cube and liters they are equivalent now what are the conversion factor what are the what conversion factor 1000 cm cube is equivalent to 1000 milliliters which is also equivalent to one dm cube and also what one liter so if you break it down so we can say 1000 cm cube is equal to one dm cube where 1000 milliliter is equal to what one liter so you have to be very careful because most times most of the questions involve you converting from one unit to another so be very very watchful that 1000 cubic centimeter is equal to what one what the uh, cubic what decimeter while 1000 milliliter is equal to one that this is the general form in which the formula can be expressed so we we've talked about volume now we then move straight all right now we move ahead quickly to pressure, which is another uh, uh, another uh, physical process of gases that we make use of. Now pressure, the pressure of a gas simply means the force of the gas that it exerts in the container per unit what area. Now what are the units which is which are of various importance to us? What, what are the units that are made use of uh, in uh, under pressure? We have, as you can see, we have ATM, which simply means atmospheric watt pressure. We have millimeter watt mercury. We have barometer. We have torques. We have newton per meter square. We have pascal. We have kilowatt pascal. 
Call for other units too. Now, the most important thing is the what is the conversion factor. And what are the conversion factor? That 180m is equal to 760 millimeter, as you can rightly see on the board. As you can rightly see on the board, know all this conversion factor. That 180m is equal to 760 tall, 180m is equal to 1.13250 per meter square. For example, you are asked to convert 20 millimeter mercury to 80m. What do you do? You are aware from convert from from conversion factor that 180m is equal to 760 watt millimeter watt mercury. Since they have told you to convert 20 millimeter mercury to 80m, so what do you do? So you will now say x 80m is equal to 20 watt millimeter watt mercury. So you cross multiply. So it means x is equal to what now? X is equal to what now? 20 over what 760 in short in the told when you are told to convert millimeter to 80m just divide by 760 when you are told to convert millimeter to 80m divide by 760 or when you are not told to convert 80m to millimeter mercury what do you do you multiply by 760 as easy as that so these other units they are just as Easy as you can see like this on the board. Exactly. Alright. So we'll move ahead again to the last one, which is temperature. Now the temperature of a gas. This which is another word, uh, physical property. Now the temperature of a gas, as you rightly said, that is that the temperature of a gas is the measure of its average kinetic energy of the gas word particle or the gas molecule. Now, what are the units that we make use of? Make it of the Kelvin, make it of the degree Celsius. We have Rankine, and we have the last one, which is degree Fahrenheit. Now, this is where we now come to stay. Now, take note Kelvin and Rankine, they are what we call their absolute temperature, while degree Celsius. And degree Fahrenheit, they are known absolute temperature. The question now is why? Now take note. When you say something is absolute, it means it cannot accommodate a negative sign or a negative uh, uh, like anything negative cannot be ascribed to it. You get me? So it means we, we can we can never have minus two Kelvin. It's not possible. It's not possible. But why that? And that is why you are not feeling it carry anything like degree Kelvin or degree Rankine. No. But in the case of degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit, they are not absolute, meaning they can take negative signs. You understand? They can take negative signs and thereafter and also they 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 they, they carry degrees. You can see it, they carry degrees. But in the aspect of Gauss's law, the two uh, the two units of temperature that are mostly used are the Kelvin and what the degree what Celsius. Now there is a relationship between Kelvin and degree Celsius, which is a constant, a 273, 273 uh, 0.16. Now the conversion the the, uh, the the conversion is like this. We have the conversion is like this, which is Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus two seven watt theory. So it means if it means if you are if, if you are to make degree Celsius a unit, you can also say degree Celsius is equal to Kelvin minus two seven theory. One and two. Please be very very forceful. I'm very very of that. For example, they tell you convert minus 248 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. What do you do? Take note, Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus 273. What do you do? You become minus 248 degrees Celsius plus what? Two this, this is a constant. Normally, the actual unit is 273.16. So, when you add them up, you should get your final answer in what? In Kelvin. Exactly. That is how easy it is. Please be very, very. Okay. 
so the answer becomes what 25 volt kelvin as you can see on the board so we move ahead quickly so these are what you should take note of please be very very careful in the aspect of gas laws all your degree celsius are always converted to kelvin except what otherwise all your degree celsius are always converted to kelvin except otherwise and take note when you ask a question on that gases law please and you are asked at the end of the day to leave your answer in degree celsius please your initials that were given to you in degree celsius must be converted first to what to Kevin scale and after word in your final answer you will not get your answer in degree celsius and making use of what this formula i hope it's clear all right the last one which is number of moles now the last one is number of moles now the symbol is n don't forget number of moles also play also play a major role in the physical properties of gases Name for the that number of moles n is equal to mass in gram over molar mass so it means this small letter m is represented as the mass in gram while the molar mass is capital letter m in gram per mole so this is it so we'll now move on to the next one all right